absurd, but uh, that was made a darn good story. <laughs> Meanwhile, the mayor of Toledo received a telegram from a California resident. It read, send zoo director Skeldon to Canada. Keep sea lion. Good bargain. Well, we usually have utter chaos in the Skeldon residence with so many children. That day, it, it became a little worse. We kept getting calls. People would call us and ask us, what do we think we're doing to keep such strained relations with Canada? After all, they go up there on vacations, they have relatives living there, and we had no right to cause such bad relations with Canada. I think that Ohio zookeeper had an awful nerve to think that he could keep it over there. Well, I think that uh, they should bring it back too, but I hear they're going to have another one. What will they do with four? It would be awful crowded. Doesn't matter if there are four. They still should get back the, the sea lion that belongs to Storybook Garden. What do you think about the sea lion, Mary? Sure, I'd like to see him come back. I would like to see it come back, too. Any chance of a peaceful settlement rested on a last-minute bargaining session in the jungle room of the Toledo Zoo. Finally, I just said to Phil, you do intend to give the sea lion back. Skeldon gave in. He told reporters Slippery would be returned to London after a few days of rest and relaxation. The story had been dramatic and tense. It had also been phony. An editor at the Toledo Blade had convinced zoo officials to fake the confrontation to stir up publicity. Earl Nichols late in life acknowledged that it was a game. I'm sure it got a few more kitties through the gates at Storybook Gardens, but it was a thoroughly cynical bit of uh, manipulation with the old public there, which is why I, I, I decided it was unworthy. Slippery was above that kind of uh, grandstanding. But the Toledo Zoo still had Slippery for the July 4th weekend, and they made a fortune on him. An estimated 23,000 visitors turned out to see his snorting, cavorting, and flipper fluttering. He drew a bigger crowd than the Indians-Tigers game at Briggs Stadium. The crowd were fantastic. I don't know how many people from London came down, but there were a lot of people from the Toledo area that were at the zoo on July 4th, which is notoriously not a very good day at the zoo. People go out on picnics and so forth. But this day was a good 4th of July at the Toledo Zoo to see Cyril, or Slippery, as you call him in London. Toledo City Council made Slippery an honorary citizen and featured his image in their Independence Day fireworks celebration. In Canada, the promotional hype was just as intense. Advertisements carried Slippery's picture. A summer theater commissioned a children's musical about him. A book based on the incident would be published across Canada. CBC Television would feature Slippery on Front Page Challenge. And in Toronto, store owner Ed Mervish displayed Slippery's so-called brother, Daffy, as a publicity stunt. Press releases claimed they had both flunked out of the same sea lion school. Skeldon planned on returning the sea lion to London on July the 6th. He told the press a small group of animal lovers would accompany him. I, of course, was president of the board at the time, had a very powerful board, and asked each one of the members of the board, would they join me in returning the seal by riding to London? Of course, it was in the summer. Now, one of my board members would accede. In this case, they said, Martin, not in hot weather, we're not going to travel all the way up to London. So I couldn't get anybody to go with me and finally told Philip, I'm afraid you're going to have to put up with me. In addition to Skeldon and Janice, the motorcade included the Danford brothers, zoo employees who had helped capture Slippery. Chief of Detectives Bob Traver also came along, modeling a sports shirt decorated with golden sea lions. They brought along a baby puma named Lucky as a peace offering to London. 
The trip was uneventful. They entered Detroit and prepared to meet the London delegation and a police escort in Windsor. To think of pulling up to the Ambassador Bridge and seeing before you 2,500, 3,000 people. In fact, I said, wonder who's coming in. Is there a dignitary of some kind that's coming here that all this attention is being showered? And I said, well, let's find out. So we will go up. And Phil got out and walked out and came back and said to me, they're waiting for us. Traffic was tied up for a half an hour as people bolted from their cars to get a look at the sea lion. Slippery obliged them by rolling on the floor of his cage and clapping his flippers. The crowd was unbelievable on the Canadian side. But going through the uh, border, no one stopped us even. They just had the gates open and we went through with sunrise. They never asked if we were citizens or from Amin, Jordan, or where. As we drove along the highway, I noticed clusters of people standing by the mailboxes and waving. So I turned to him and said, I wonder what the reason is. And he said to me, Martin, turn your radio on. And then he explained to me that the radio station in London had a team that was behind us that was reporting on what it was that was transpiring. I said, come on, you don't mean they're going to follow us for the 70 miles until we hit London? Yep, he said, that's true. Then we hit London where the crowd were unbelievable. Slippery, London's elusive sea lion returned in triumph. A little stunned by the welcome he received when tens of thousands of persons lined the street to cheer. A little tired from his 400-mile swim and 200-mile return drive, and as bewildered as his captors over his enthusiastic greeting. The London Free Press. Police estimated crowds 